Franklin Benedict's life was a movie. It would be a thriller. Yeah, it's very hard every day. Full of suspense. We shouldn't be here right now. We really shouldn't. A murder mystery. He was executed, uh, shot in the head, then shot again in the chest. Franklin Benedict was 26 years old, living in an apartment just off Kent State's campus when he was ambushed and killed on July 7, 2015. Three years have passed and still no suspects. It's one of those things where we just can't find a reason or a motive why Frank was killed. No reason, no motive, no real clues as to who killed Franklin or even why. But can police detectives think that someone they've spoken with knows more than they're revealing? Because we really believe that the answer is right in front of us, that somebody holds that answer. And for them to not disclose it is, is the most frustrating thing of all. For Franklin's family, there is more than frustration. There is raw heartbreak. <laughs> He was kind. This isn't a Hollywood movie. Is every day hard for you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard every day. This is a real life tragedy that wrecked their lives. It's always in our minds. The kind of pain you would never wish on anyone. He not only lost his life, but he took ours to whoever killed him. You're a coward because you picked up that gun and you shot Franklin. I would say what you did was terrible, very rotten to take his life. You, know, you can't lose someone in a blink of an eye without at least some explanation or reasoning for it. Franklin's body was discovered by his roommate, Matt Wright, Are you still there? on the afternoon of July 8th. where's your emergency? Sir, you have the city of Kent. Go ahead. He had been dead for about 12 hours. No, I, I think he's dead. Well, okay. he, he, he's completely cold. Franklin's last words had been text messages and phone calls to his roommate, telling him the power in their place was out. We talked on the phone for a while about it. I said, no, the power's got to be on. I called the power company. They said it has to be on. So his roommate decided to stay the night at a girlfriend's house, coming home at lunch the next day to see if the lights were back on. So I got home at lunch, just walked into the house as normal, and I saw him laying in the hallway. So my initial thought was he was messing with the breaker box and he like blew himself up with the, he got electrocuted. The breaker box. Franklin's family believes the electricity had deliberately been turned off leaving him in the dark when he returned home from work. They go in and shut the lights off, so they've been in that apartment. If I was gonna kill someone, I wouldn't think about shutting off the breaker box. That's uh, some thought put into it. Franklin worked as a third shift supervisor at Walmart. Security footage showing the moment he left work on July 7th, just after 11.20 at night the last time he was ever seen alive. It drives his whole family crazy. I know people always look to me for answers for it, saying you have to know something else, there has to be a piece of information, but there's nothing. And I've had years to think about it, and in years I've come up with nothing. Franklin was the Benedict's oldest son. If his life were a movie, his character would be cast as mild and mellow, a movie buff. Oh, yeah, he was a, a movie buff. He, uh, he bought movies every chance he got. He didn't just watch a movie. He was more like a critic. He attended Kent State from 2009 to 2013, studying communications, hoping to someday make it in the world of filmmaking. And, you know, what's ironic is the way he passed is like a movie. It's like a, a suspense or a horror film that ends, and you don't get answers. The audience is left wondering. Because if we were to cast Franklin's killer, 
in this real life horror film, that person would be methodical and meticulous. So calculating and disciplined, not a shred of evidence is left behind. You know, we're talking about a shooting here. We don't know who was on the other end of that gun. Could be a male, could be a female. Franklin's murderer lay in wait in the dark inside his apartment for hours, getting in through the unlocked sliding glass door. They escaped by cutting through this bedroom window screen and jumping down from the second floor. And nothing from the house was stolen either, and there were plenty of valuables that they could have taken. No, almost nothing was touched. Detectives say their investigation has found there was no sign of drugs. So they did a tox screen on our son, and that the tox screen came back perfect, not even an aspirin. Nothing sinister that Franklin was up to. They'd never seen one so clean in their life, for a kid being 26 years old. No reason that anyone can find for anyone to want Franklin dead. Now, is there something that we missed? You never know. We hope not, but in a way we hope so, that you know, there might be a break. A break they are all waiting for. A break that every good movie ends with. That satisfying ending that answers all of your lingering questions. I hope the sequel is uh, Killer is found and brought to justice and everybody gets some closure. I think more than anything, all people want is some closure from this. And a chance to look the killer in the eyes and tell them this. You're nothing. You're a coward. Because whatever was going on between you and Frank did not have to end this way. We said this over and over again in the story, but it bears repeating. We spoke to family, friends, and police, and none of them can figure out a reason why Franklin was killed, making it so much more difficult to find who killed him. Detectives do believe he was targeted because of the level of premeditation to his murder. They're waiting for any new information to lead them to the killer. If you know something, speak up and give Franklin Benedict's family the peace that they need. Homa Bash, News 5.